obviously you've tuned in again to try and achieve some greatness that you are struggling to achieve. And it is by watching me that you will learn certain tactics and ways of playing this game which will make you approach the inkling almost of how great I am. Obviously, when trying to achieve greatness, one must be a little bit unexpected and we will unexpectedly carry this game as my team flounders and wallows and plays as most of you play and that is to just simply drive forward and fight mano a mano versus the enemies in their face exchanging shots exchanging hp and exchanging frustrations <sighs> of course the correct strategy is to get yourself a heavy tank and then do what a heavy tank does not do and that is to go to the field here and spot some enemies and uh, perhaps uh, take some cheeky shots as they drive by but wargaming has decided that it will give me some poor sigma this game you can tell by the first shot you take that wargaming either wants you to win or wants you to lose, but I will win even though Wargaming does not want me to by shooting this medium tank who has gone to an area that medium tanks usually go to, not knowing that a heavy tank is waiting there for him. And I have floated like a butterfly to this position, now I have stung like a bee and low rolled twice because Wargaming, as I said, has tried to make me lose this game, realizing that I am on a 47 game winning streak, have another shot there in the mirror. So Wargaming will continue to low roll my shots, but have no fear, or perhaps they will bounce some shots on obvious penetrating spots in armor like if shooting a T-123 in the side like this. When this sort of manipulation of the game by the programmer happens, it's best to just ignore it and proceed and win the game by yourself anyway. And the easy way to do this is to, well, let's make Wargaming happy and bounce another shot. Now we can continue to let RNG shape the way we play this or we can change the way we're approaching the game and simply go out and win and let's just take this guy out to begin the snowballing effect of victory which I have achieved by doing something unexpected. <sighs> if you are watching closely you are probably now learning the correct techniques as my teammates keep exchanging HP. I've decided that now is the best time to move in with my heavy tank which can float like a butterfly now and show up behind the enemies where they least expect it. Of course they are always just looking forward forward blindfolds looking straight at the pixel they are aiming for, not appreciating the fact that a unicom could come up behind them and just simply shoot them in the ass and roll. Low roll once more. And now it's just a matter of going stealth and then coming behind this T-123 and making him feel foolish. Shall we fight him from the front or from the behind? I dare say we shall fight him from the behind. So we will now float like a butterfly and sting like a bee and low roll again and now Attack from the derriere. Now as these enemies surge forward thinking they can win this game <laughs> by going two versus one on my teammate. I will low roll one more time, but that's okay. I will simply now whoop, and ram him from behind. And now use my floating like a butterfly speed to simply chase down this French medium tank which cannot escape the clutches of the Unicom which chases him. And as he tries to escape, I will just simply cut him off at the pass. Unlock my auto aim. Aim carefully again and sting him like a bee once more time. And that is all you have to do. If you've been watching this and have observed carefully, you will realize that all you have to do is exactly what I did in this battle. And if the enemies do exactly what they do, you too can achieve almost 4,000 damage in a below average game in which I carried the team to victory. And if you did not understand or comprehend what I was trying to teach you, you can tune in again when I will display for you again my awesomeness in carrying these games. And now let's feature some lower level players who had a accidental win and good carry and we will let Klaus Kellerman do the commentary for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. I like it a juice. You like it a juice? I like it a juice. <laughs> Reference? You'll n none of you will get that. None of you. Uh, uh, what's this guy's name? Uh, Killer Gigi from the f f four f f FF 4F. Clan. Shout out to you, guys. Who says the T28 prototype is still awesome? Is it? What do you guys think? Is the T28 prototype still awesome? Do we have to make the T28 prototype great again? Well, I'll answer the question. You guys can think about that. Cromwell idiot, says the uh, uh, Excalibur. Uh, why is the Cromwell an idiot? 
The Excalibur is a Cromwell idiot. Help! Says the AMX. And the, obviously, let's see where the Cromwell is. He's right there. The Excalibur thinks he's an idiot. All right, I will propose to you that the T-28 prototype was never great. It was never awesome. And it, it is therefore not still great. It's not still great. It's, um, it never was great. <laughs> but, Daddy, I just took my first two shots and missed. Fully aimed. Toy. T-28 prototype is still great. No, it sucks. Come on, guys. It's uh, slow. Um, and it, uh, it basically has no armor. But, <laughs> you know, good. It's, it's a tank. Destroyer. <laughs> and uh, there's no more shots here. You see what he's doing here? Let's, let's get serious for a minute. Uh, in the old days, this map had uh, gaps. Where he's aiming, you could shoot those people. Or those tanks. Not, you're not really actually shooting people in this game. You're shooting tanks. Uh, in the old days, this map was broken. Let's make the map a little bigger. Uh, right from That's why people camped in this position. Is so they could shoot uh, those people over there. Uh, and so if you got caught, because the topography had undulations. And if you were in the low undulation, you could get sniped. And so this cluster of tanks that was uh, there could, could farm those guys. But uh, it was broken because the other side, you see where the uh, JGPZ4 and the Nomad are? The other, the, the opposing team's comparable position could not snipe because there was no undulations in topography. So it was kind of broken. But the Wargaming fixed that. They removed the undulations. They, uh, it, I'll point to it on the mini-map. You, you guys know this, right? You play there. They made this whole area here. You see where I'm putting my, the arrow? That's all high ground now, so if you come from the north, you get behind that and you're safe from the sniping position. Which makes this position where the T-28 prototype has gone not a very good spot anymore. It's just, you know, unless you find uh, uh, some Muppets that are in the open or you get a light tank that's trying to spot in the middle and you catch them off guard. This is not a good spot anymore. Or sometimes it's a good spot. So you're still trying to shoot over here and there's no shots. Sometimes if the, if the enemies, the heavy tanks on the 9-0 line, break through and come around to your base. Oh, really good gun on this T-28 project. If they break through, that, then this is a good spot to defend the base from. If you got full view of the base and you can shoot them uh, as they come to the south. I'll point out the mini-map again. Like if, they, if these guys break through and come... Oops. If these guys break through and come down here then you can shoot them. So, this is no longer a great position at the beginning of the game. It used to be. I remember uh, going here all the time and having some monster spotting games, especially if you're platooned with someone who would uh, go uh, and spot those guys as they cross that gap. And I remember going to this position and people saying, uh, you know, Cromwell idiot! Uh, people that would go here, uh, other people on the team would yell at you, Why are you there? Uninstall, and you'd be farming for three, four thousand damage. Yeah, you're camping. <coughs> but uh, now, uh, maybe that's why the Cromwell idiot is because now when you go there, it's not that great. So there's the kind of um, you got to move up for uh, further now, right? Let's see where the Burask is. You got to move up to the next ridge line. You gotta, you gotta go up here now kind of further up and you can shoot left and right and the map plays out differently okay that's all i'm trying to say i could have done that whole discussion i could have uh, summarized it with one sentence this map plays differently now but this is close kellerman's channel so uh we explain explain exp explain things Lure, effing idiot so the cromwell's an idiot and the love is an idiot according to the team it is comments so I, I can't make them pro come back. What's wrong with these people? Is it the no? That this time the AMX is calling the uh, the Lerva an idiot. The Lerva is not an idiot. He's in a. You, you see where he is there at K9. K9. 
maybe he's a canine. Uh, he's, he realizes that his team is getting overrun there on the 9-0 line, and that's a really good sniping position. Um, okay, let's stop it right here. See, that's a really good sniping position to shoot there. Now, Maybe you'd say, okay, the Leuven should have moved up. He has good gun depression and good turret. He could have fought easily over here, and maybe they, his teammates wouldn't have lost. Fair enough. But he's there. He can snipe from there. And now that uh, these guys have broken through and are going to probably drive over here, that's precisely when the position this guy camped in for the first six minutes. He was in that position for six minutes. Now the position he just left is good. So he's just not looking at the map or maybe doesn't appreciate um, what's going on, right? They're losing 4-9. Uh, the Leuve, he's actually pinging the map. He's saying help, uh, and he's correct. He's not, and he, ooh, good ammo rack on the T-28. He, he's, I don't think he's saying help, help me. He's trying to let the team know, he's, I'm going to spot people as they cross now. You guys can shoot them. Uh, but that's not always the case. You know, the enemies may be stupid and not move forward. They are winning 5-10. So they're winning by a lot. And there's a lot of them that won that 9-0 line. They could easily all push through. If they all push through uh, with only a Stuart Emil, I, I don't think there's anything that could... Nothing could stop them now! So... Uh, but they're not, because they're Muppets. So, in hindsight, what I said about uh, the position being a good one, that he didn't take, uh, it ends up, yeah, uh, it would have been a good one, but uh, the enemies did not cooperate, so uh, the position he's in now is a gooder position. Because you never know what's going to happen in this game, right? Like, uh, uh, Of course, where he was is probably the better position, the way most teams would probably behave after... At the point of the battle when I, I said it, but they didn't. I don't see here comes a type 62 now, he's just moved up. He's the only enemy that's moved up. So the enemies had this game, the victory, in the victory column. And they all suck and now they're gonna lose. And so your decision of going where you went uh, was probably not the highest percentage. Uh, you know, there's decisions. There's, there's never a, a right and a wrong decision. I'm not saying he's making a mistake. There's never a right and wrong decision, right? Because you never know what the enemies are going to do. There's always a, well, a, a per, what percentage correct is your decision? Like probably 70% uh, of the time it would have been better to stay here. Because those enemies would have come down. So it would have been like a 70% good decision. Uh, but then if he stayed there, the 30% of the time that the enemy as well, they, they just, even though they're winning by five tanks and they won that flank, they went back to base or they floundered in the middle like they're doing here. The OI drove into the river. Or maybe they anticipated being sniped from there. Maybe the enemies, maybe it's, well, it's like, uh, the enemies aren't stupid. They're all too smart. And they thought, oh, if we go there, we're going to get sniped. Therefore, we have to do something different. And it's like, you know, who the hell knows, right? The point is, <laughs> on average, I'd say, I don't know, I'm making up a number, 70% of the time, it's probably a good decision to sit there when, when your team loses the 9-0 line because most players suck uh, and they're just gonna, oh, we're winning, and they just keep going. And then you can, you can do a lot of damage when they start uh, coming in the open with that love spotting. So... It was probably a 70% good decision, but he decided to go somewhere else. And this is one of the uh, games where uh, it, it would have been a 30% decision. And actually, uh, it's working out better for him. <laughs> so you can make a bad decision and it works out better. It, but it's not a bad decision. There's no good and bad. There's just statistically better and statistically Worse. But Killer GG ends up acing the tank and he ends up getting 3,598 damage with 7 kills. It all worked out perfectly and he made some credits without a premium account, which is the best 
part of this video. So hey guys, don't get me wrong. Don't uh, think that I was saying that he played poorly or he made the wrong uh, decision and he just won by luck. That's not what I'm trying to say. It's um, uh, There's a difference between uh, right and wrong decisions and or uh, compared to um, high percentage uh, decisions, right? Like even in sport, if you guys are sp sports fans or something, the, the big highlight reels is usually what you see is the uh, really low percent chance uh, um, play, but it works and it's spectacular, right? Like the, uh, the football 65-yard uh, pass or the uh, in tennis the guy's running and he's just got the, the high percentage shot is to just shoot it uh, towards the middle of the net where the net's a little bit lower and keep the ball in play because he's off balance, right? That's the high percentage shot. If he takes that shot 20 times, he's going to make the shot in the middle 19 out of 20 times. But no, the guy puts top spin on it and it zoom, goes straight down the line and, right? and he gets the point straight down the line with a much harder shot. If he tries that shot 20 times, he'll do it three times. It's a low percentage shot, but when it works, it's spectacular. So we always see the, um, the low percentage um, and that's in everything, in, in golf too, right? Uh, no one wants to see uh, it's a par whatever and uh, I don't know a lot about golf, but uh, you know, the guy's gonna come up there and then the caddy says, uh, here, take the, the five iron and just get it down the uh, fairway in the middle because the second shot is gonna be your good. That's a boring shot, but it's probably the best high percentage shot. Stay on the fairway because it's gonna take you three to get to the green or whatever. No, the guy who pulls out the his, uh, his driver and you know, does the whatever, what's the longest drive now, 400 or 300 yards or whatever. That's the one that, that uh, it's on the top five shots of the week, whatever. But it still took him three shots to get to the green because then the second shot doesn't quite make it. And so his third shot, instead of uh, pitching around there uh, 110 yards, he pitches on there 50 yards. You know what I'm saying? You follow me? You feel me? <laughs> and in this game, I did a series. I don't know if, how many of you watched it. Uh, it was medium popular. It wasn't super popular. I think because people got bored of it because I, I did every map. <laughs> but I Because I, I love to play light tanks. And so uh, I wanted to do some research on statistics. Uh, because... You can watch a, a light tank gameplay where a guy does 18,000 spotting or 15,000 spotting and, and go, wow. You know? And he goes, it's like some weird game where some weird shit happens. And you might think, ooh, boy, I'll never be able to do that. And so you don't learn anything from those games. Uh, or you don't learn anything when you see the one guy that kills uh, 14 people and he does 9,000 damage because the enemies are all clueless. And they just stand and like sit in the open yeah it's fun to watch but it's not the high percentage player if you played exactly like he did and the enemies weren't muppets you'd probably die <laughs> so i did this series for light tanks where i i said to myself well on each map what is the highest percentage play for a light tank to have a fantastic spotting game and so i i researched it uh, use not just picking the top games but I, I, I sorted replays for the top um, uh, assistance damage like the top 20 assistance damage games on any map like this map. Uh, and then I would uh, download all of them like 20 30 games the top 20 or 30 and watch them and I didn't spend two weeks what for every map I would watch them at high speed right and see where that light tank would go for his initial position. And invariably, what it turned out, what I discovered, was that on every map, and it depended on what spawn, right? Some um, con consistently high results would occur when a, a light tank went to a, a, a certain starting position, a certain initial position. And on some maps, it was like uh, the out of the top 20 highest spotting games uh, from this spawn, out of the top 20, 17 of them were when the tank went to this initial spotting position. 
We've got all this spawning from that one position, and then, you know. But from the other spawn, uh, whatever, 14 out of the 20 top damage assist positions were when he went to this other position, which was not always intuitive. I did it for every map. And if you're a light tank player, uh, it may it may not work every game. Right? You may go to that position and not get a, a monster spotting game, or you might get detected and get countered and die. But statistically speaking, uh, that's where you're going to have the highest chance of uh, having those monster games. And another thing I learned from that series was that some maps are completely broken. Some maps, uh, one, the south spawn, for example, you look at the top damage assist games and they would be uh, 18 out of the top 20 was when the light tank went to this particular bush at this particular spot in the map. And you just watch them at fast speed and you see like all the top damage uh, games from that spawn are when the tank goes to that bush. When they go to other bushes, it's not as good. Right? But then you watch uh, sort from the other spawn and you would see that there was no, uh, there wasn't 18 out of the top 20 games or when they went to a different push. There would be like a, a, a lower damage assist and it would be, you'd watch it and there would be no consistency. Uh, it would be a, a variety. Uh, light tank driving, you know, sometimes the guy goes west, sometimes he goes east, sometimes he goes to the middle. One time an EVR drove around like a mop and got a, had a good game. But there was no consistent magic position that resulted in, say, the top 17 games out of 20 being the highest game of assist. If you haven't watched that series, maybe I'll link the, the playlist. Why am I trying to say, why did I explain all that? Because the statistics, uh, statistically speaking, that's uh, um, how you'll just have higher win rate or higher results, is by uh, going to the high percentage uh, positions at various times in the game. Uh, hugely true for light tanks and where they their initial positions are because they do a lot of the detecting and on some maps the team that has the best detector wins all the camp and abushka maps and then for heavy tanks too uh, maybe I should do that series but I, I started looking at it and initial heavy tank positions on some maps the ones that uh, the heavy tanks get the highest damage results not highest detection, highest damage result. Very consistent on some maps. And some of you'd be surprised where that is. Hey, did we, uh... Did we miss this game? What's his name? Jezzao. Jezza. Jezza from the Quack Clan. There's a nomad up there. He's probably in that bush in the corner, right? Yeah, there he is, buddy. He got him! <laughs> no, he didn't. They got the T-32. <laughs> no one got the Nomad yet. I thought he got There was a dead tank there. That's the artillery. Come on, buddy. There he is. Oh! That missed, but Wargaming said yes. And here comes the Nomad. What, what are you doing, Nomad? Boom! You're dying. That's what we're doing. Well, if I find the link, I'll leave it connected. Uh, in there, and uh, maybe just to watch the ones where you're interested in a particular map. Um, it's for light tanks for every map. Oh, oh yeah. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have achieved just a small inkling of the greatness which I have displayed. And I know it is hard for you to achieve that, but perhaps if you watch 50 or 60 of my below average games, you too can once approximately uh, feel comfortable sucking, uh, even though you uh, uh, will uh, tune in again and learn the or just observe the correct ways of playing because uh, uh, that's probably the only thing that you can possibly achieve is observing the greatness. Uh, performing the greatness uh, will be unattainable for most of you. And, uh, so you'll be relegated to just watching my awesomeness while you continue to flounder, which is okay as long as you are continuing to view and trying to learn what I'm trying to teach you. And uh, Perhaps one day you will increase your W8 by four or five points, uh, trying to catch up to my uh, quadruple digit W8, which is consistently above 5,000. Even on these below average games, which I choose to share with you, uh, sharing the above average games that would simply discourage you from playing as you uh, watch in awe and realize that you will never achieve the greatness that, uh, uh, 
that you observe. So it would be cruel for me to show you my average or above average games. You would, uh, you would feel sad at your ineptitude and your muppetness. So, so uh, in order to make you feel better, I have chosen some below average games which I can share. You will still feel in awe and observe and realize that you will probably never achieve that, but uh, at least you will not feel uh, down on yourself uh, when observing my awesomeness and, uh, and so on and so forth and etc. and etc.